Mr. Jones? Yes? I reached out here for the next bag of hot water up here. Take one. Thank you. Susan? Yes? Look. Would you mind please running through this once more? Of course. Sit on the bed if you will. I'll go through it one more time. Boss? Yes, Susan? You wouldn't be nervous, would you? Miss Gregory, you're looking at the proverbial cat on a tin roof. I can't believe it. Never seen you like this before. And I've never had a job like this before. But this is what you've been waiting for. This is what everybody's been waiting for. The engineers, the stylists. The entire Ford Motor Company has put everything behind us. I've watched it all happen from ideas to sketches from clay to prototypes. And now finally, here it is. How do you tell a story like that? How do you tell twenty hundred boys out of motor drivers what this car is all about? In ten minutes, they'll be in here. And read it. One wrong word and I'll tell it. Nonsense. Who knows more about the car? The features and what they do. Some of the engineers know a whole lot more. But you have an overall picture. You've been with it from the beginning. That's why you were chosen to make this first show. But I don't know. On top of that, you've got a script. But it's true. And that's more than a recall. Or you did this morning. Listen, Susan, that's what bothers me. I know it's cold, too cold. I don't see it. All of a sudden, the words aren't right. But don't bother about the words, then. I mean, boss, look. Maybe I shouldn't say this. At least not at the last minute like this. But you've spent days writing and rewriting and you're all mixed up in words. The script is good, but maybe you don't need it. Remember last week when the VIPs came through? Yes. Well, you didn't give them a lot of words. You gave them a look at the car. You told them about some of the features. And then you took them out and gave them a line to prove what you said. I believe. Now I've heard you say this to other people. This is the exit. You don't have to make fantastic claims and use all the adjectives. This is the exit. Show it to people. Tell them about it. Get it behind the wheel. Well, it's the same thing here. Sure, these are important people from the press. But they just want to know what the public wants to know. What does it look like? What's different about it? How does it work? How do you get so smart? One who doesn't practice what he preaches. And all along, I've said, keep it simply get behind the wheel. And I almost forgot. Make arrangements for just that place for all 23 people. Clear for money. You'll hear the number as soon as we're finished here. Right. Now let's see. We change the presentation. Okay, now, let's try out this way. All right, the lights are up, the music comes on. I step over to the car. And I say, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end. I give them a couple of minutes to crowd around and take pictures and then... Let's see. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Exit Division of the Ford Motor Company, welcome. We're very pleased that you wanted to see our new Exit Automobile. It's no secret that we're proud of it. It took us 10 years to create this new line. 10 years of research, testing, and development. 10 years to build a better motor car. We're so sure that the new exit is better and is different. 
that we're going to depart from the usual new car presentation and let you make up your own minds about the answer. We're not going to give you a lot of fancy words and qualities. In a few minutes, when we leave this room, you'll all have a chance to get behind the wheel and try it for yourself. You see, this is a brand new automobile, so we feel the car must be driven to really appreciate it. Even with the increasing emphasis on the style and design of the day, the public insists on knowing how the car handles, how to drive and perform. But before you go out and drive these cars for yourselves, I'd like to call your attention to several of the things that make the answer outstanding. First of all, I won't wear that style. Appearance is a very personal thing. We think Edson's style speaks for itself. This, we believe, is a mechanical original, a look of value, so different that this is the only automobile distinctive enough to recognize good enough from a block away. From the side of the end, the answer presents a clean silhouette. And I think this is most important. The form and poised look of this car does not change in motion while it is standing at the curb. The automobile doesn't tilt or lean insensibly with a change of gravity or when it climbs the brakes. This stability is built into the total design of the chassis. The suspension system of the new Edson is designed to soak up bumps in the road without giving you that seasick motion. So again, it's another automobile. As you will all see on the test track in a few minutes, the Edson takes road surfaces in stride. And its steering qualities are true and stable. The right combination of roundability and road stability are going to make the 1958 Edsel smoother riding and safer handling. You know, sometimes it's the little things, the extras that capture the public's fancy, and one which is going to have a lot of appeal for the customer is a simple little trunk light device. I turn the key in this optional switch. And that pops the flight deck. There's nothing really special about it in the rear compartment, except it's bigger. Holds more than whatever you want to carry. <coughs> now, if you'll all step over here, please, I'd like to show you something that's an answer first that will be unique in the industry for some time. This is our Telefax transmission control. You can drive the axle, park it, reverse it, and drive it without lifting a hand from the wheel or searching for the control. Axle's Telefax drive buttons are correctly placed in the center of the steering wheel. All the shifting, even at the park, is effortless because the axle literally shifts itself. Telefax takes the push out of push buttons. All you do is flip the telepatch button, an electrical contact is made, and a rugged precision brain selects the drive range and engages the transmission. This is telepatch, a new standard in safety, the first really convenient fingertip transmission system. Of course, the Edsel offers you all the Ford Motor Company pioneered safety features. Safety door locks, deep your steering wheel, and full crash pattern. And while we're on the subject of convenience and safety, I'd like to show you the new Edsel instrument cluster. In designing this, we followed the most advanced aircraft development. We built, as you can see, all instrument switches and warning signals in three parallel horizontal rows. Every unit is clearly visible and within easy fingertip reach. The major instruments are a tachometer, a fuel gauge, a speedometer, a flight, and what we call the dial temp heater and ventilation control. This last control should be a welcome change from the old-fashioned series of mounting switches 
that defies you to use your ego. Now, one simple dial tunes in temperature, regulation, and even optional air conditioning. You select the climate you want with a twist of the wrist. This little row of instruments here is a big part of the news about the new actual instrument panel. We call it our built-in warning system. This system of warning lights is, we think, a major contribution to customer safety and convenience. A lot of tempers are going to be saved by these visual reminders that tell you when your oil pressure is low, when your generator is not charging, when your emergency brake is on, when your fuel level is near empty, when your oil level is low, when your engine's too cold or too hot. At the top, the entire speedometer dial lights up in red if you pass the preset cruising speed of your truck. There's a display here I think you'll find interesting. Incidentally, displays will be available to dealers so they can demonstrate these same features to the public. Here we have a model of our self-adjusting brother. Yes, I said self-adjusting because it's almost back. All you do to keep your brakes in perfect adjustment is to drive your automobile. The normal action of putting on the brake and reversing your direction, something you probably do ten times a day, sets off this simple mechanical device that day after day adjusts and readjusts, keeping your brakes in the best working condition. That's one item that Edson Holder won't find out their service for. The question of service and mechanical features leads me to one of the most important things by the become. That is its power and performance. Of course, the only way to really appreciate the performance is to get behind the wheel. But before we do, I want to introduce you to one of the major reasons for the outstanding performance of the new X. The E-475 engine. The 475, by the way, stands for torque. As most of you know, torque is the power that hits you in the seat of the pants when you press the accelerator. Torque is the power that gives response and maneuverability when you need it. We're going to talk a lot about torque this year because both of our new axle engines are designed to give the driver maximum torque or usable power at normal cruising speeds. This building high torque power, plus the unusually high compression ratio, 10.5 to 1, in both engines, means that our automobiles are going to accelerate faster and have more reserve push for passing and peak highway performance. The E-475 here was designed for the Corsair and Citation series, just as the E-400 was developed for the Ranger and Pacer model. While there's a difference in size, both of these brood engines of ours will put 1958 Edsel on the head of stoplights and on the turnpike. I haven't mentioned horsepower, not because we're dumping it, but simply because it's not the most important thing about an engine. We have plenty of horses here, 345 in the larger series and 303 in the Ranger and Pacer. But we're not going to blow our horns by the light of theoretical horsepower tables when we have and can demonstrate more really usable power than any competitive make automobile. Now, one last thing about these engines. They operate with an extremely short stroke that minimizes friction and reduces engine wear. This means longer engine life. In the E-475, a unique three-stage cooling system provides fast, efficient engine warm-up. In cold weather, the cooling is pre-warmed before flowing through the entire system. A thermostatic control does the same job in the E-400. So while we've concentrated on the power and performance of our engines, we haven't forgotten to build in economy and long-life features. It should add up to more safer and easier miles for the owner's fuel value. 
with it. How is that to you? I think it was just like, he said, just enough. And they can ask questions after. And most important, they can satisfy themselves on the track. Good. Look, did I forget anything? Well, the only thing you didn't mention was the plan to receive. And that's a first, isn't it? Right. They had a know about it. You'll notice that the new exit front seat is built differently from anything else you've seen before. A gentleman with human engineering came into play. We felt that the third person in the front seat was tired of leaning against the split in the seat pad. So we broke the seat into a one-third and a two-third section, allowing the driver a little more privacy and the other two passengers plenty of unbroken seating area. If you come in closer, you'll see something else that's brand new in automobile interior, and that is contour seating. These seats, and those of the majority of our cars this year, are contour style for extra comfort, just like the increasingly popular and very expensive contour chairs. Good. Very good. I think we're going to be a highly success, boss. And if you don't let them in, that's just what they'll be doing. Thank you, Susie. This goes right. I'll buy you a new typewriter. <laughs> okay, Charlie. We're all set in here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the exit. 